Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Claris Engage Beyond panel, Developer Resources in the Claris Community, with Maka and Karna Sao from Saliant Consulting leading the discussion. I'm Rosemary Tiji, Community Engagement Manager at Claris, and I'll be your host today. Before we get started with the panel, we just have a few recommendations and housekeeping notes so you will have the best experience with WebEx. Uh, we've put the WebEx support contact information and some helpful links in the chat. If you require technical support, please contact WebEx support using the contact information provided. We recommend using your computer, your computer audio if possible, but if you have limited bandwidth, you can dial in using the provided telephone numbers. Choose audio connection by clicking on the three horizontal dots at the bottom of the WebEx window to select how you want to listen to today's session. And finally, we recommend that you shut down any other applications that may draw bandwidth to optimize your viewing experience. You also have some options to customize your viewing experience. To explore and customize how to view today's presentation and to optimize how you see the various panelists, you can select layout at the top of the WebEx window. And we've noted a few recommendations on the slide outlined in red. Um, please note we do have a team producing the event behind the scenes and they will not be on camera when they are not speaking. And finally, we will have a little bit of time to answer questions from the audience during the panel. To do that, you can use the Q&A panel in WebEx. Click on the three dots in the very bottom right of the WebEx window and open Q&A. And send your question to all panelists and send it. And we will answer audience questions as we have time. And with that, it's my pleasure to hand the virtual microphone to Maka and Karna Sao to lead today's discussion. Hey, thanks, Rosemary. So happy to be here. Hi, everyone. My name is Maka and Karna Sao, and I am a Claris enthusiast. I love this community and everything it does to help each other grow and learn, which is a lot. So I've actually asked these specific panelists to join me today because they're all part of community initiatives that are very close to me. So we're going to learn about what those initiatives are and how they help people new to the Claris community and also those looking to grow within the Claris community. So before I get into that, I'd love to introduce my panelists. So today I have with me Beth Marillo, Janine Campbell, Vanessa Costanzo, and Thad Murillo. So I'm going to start um, by asking you all a little bit of a lightning round question of how did you get, how did you get your first introduction to the Claris platform? Um, I'm going to start with Vanessa. Awesome. Thanks, Maka. So my dad introduced me to the Claris platform in grade school, actually, through our family business. And I've held different roles over the years, but the reason I was uh, most excited to come back after kind of pursuing other opportunities was the incredible community and how supportive it is. Janine, what about you? Yeah, I can relate to Vanessa on that one. I was also introduced to FileMaker through my dad and his business, our family business, many years ago. It was the tool we used to manage our clients in a retail CRM. Um, so uh, it's pretty incredible having started there with knowledge of FileMaker from that side of things to now being on the Clara side of things and having experienced all that's possible with this really awesome platform um, and how far it's come since then. I love that. Thad, you're um, an interesting case because you actually don't work in the Claris platform yet, maybe after this panel you will, um, but you do work in the tech industry. So tell us a little bit, how did you get into the tech industry? Uh, so yeah, I started off in college doing industrial and electrical engineering. And when I came out, my first job, I did a lot of tech work, but it was boring. It didn't seem like it went anywhere. And I didn't have a passion for it. And so walked away from it, did some graduate school for economics and, and history and came back to it when I was looking for a job after graduate school and grew into, went from the very basics of handing people new phones to architecting a lot of infrastructure um, with the help of PowerShell and 
um, some other Microsoft products, and now also doing development in Python. Awesome. What about you, Beth? Uh, well, I actually started as an end user three years ago this month. Uh, and at the risk of sounding really cheesy, <laughs> I fell in love with FileMaker. Uh, it went from being something that got tacked on to my job to being the favorite part of my job to the, you know what? I don't want the rest of my job. I just want to do this. So, <laughs> so you ended up making a complete career change, correct? I did. I did. Yeah. So, t so let's talk about that a little bit. So, so mm -hmm. I find it interesting because I feel like a lot of people do that um, in the Claris platform. So when you started off and you were essentially just a power user, what did, where did you go or, or how, did you, how did you learn more? How did you expand your skills? Well, I started knowing literally nothing and it was the here, start, start helping us and see what you can do. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm sitting there using what was the predecessor to Claris Academy watching the little videos on my phone in the evenings while I'm in the doctor's waiting office, and then going the next day to the office and going, well, can I apply that? Can I make that work here? And what if I do this? What if I do that? And then just playing around and trying to figure it out. Um, and then the next step was the company that I was with hired a new developer and they went with Thorson Consulting that was based locally here in the Chicagoland area. And the owner there, Molly Connolly, uh, was an awesome uh, first shove into the <laughs> the community for me. Uh, and one of her devs, Steve Gleason, also gave me a great shove. Uh, Steve encouraged me to join CAFTA, which is the Chicago area user group. Uh, and Molly said, you've got to join WinFM and you've got to get a mentor. You can do this. <laughs> Okay, I so I love like so many things you mentioned, like Kafta. You know, let's talk about a little bit about WitFM. Um, we have someone here from WitFM, uh, Vanessa. Can you just tell us really quickly what is WitFM? Yeah, so WitFM is a volunteer-run 501c3 nonprofit, and we create opportunities and elevate professional development for women. But we couldn't do those kind of without the participation and support of everyone. So we have ways for everyone to get involved. And we have kind of four different main areas we focus on, which are scholarships, networking, mentorship, and leadership. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So Beth, back to you for a second. Um, you got mentorship through WitFM. Like, tell us about that experience and how that helped you. So I've had a lot of mentors, whether they are a little short, you know, I'll help you for the week. <laughs> Or longer ones. My my biggest and most important mentorship was the one I got through WitFM with Barbara Cooney. Um, she's been awesome. She's been my mentor for I think we're at two years this month. <laughs> um, matter of fact, she's totally gone above and beyond um, over the holidays this past year. She spent I'm not joking somewhere between thirty and forty hours with me, helping me build my first uh, API integration. Um, so I'm not on work hours. This was her free time. <laughs> So she was awesome. Um, and then I also had another mentor that partnership, that uh, development company that we brought in, um, the dev, dev that we worked with, Steve, was phenomenal. He did a lot of on the job stuff with me where I'd build so far and get stuck and go, well, now what do I do? <laughs> and he'd help me figure it out. I also learned a very valuable lesson. When you're learning and you're just starting, ask, discuss your ideas before you go and build. Um, I did, uh, I made it a little boo-boo. I used a popover button for navigation. You know, everything needs to be able to go from customers to contractors and easily. Uh, I did a popover button, said, this is great. I make one button, I'll put it on all my layouts and we're good to go. I put it on 150, 200 layouts and there was a typo. So then I had to fix it on 150 to 200 layouts. Uh, and Steve goes, well, actually next time you might wanna do a card window one place to change you fix the typo there and it you call that card window from everywhere so i definitely learned ask first <laughs> yeah. yeah i i i find that the community they they're so passionate about the platform that they love to talk about it and they love to help people grow and so um i i know sometimes i get scared i'm like oh i don't want to bug somebody but a lot of times people are so willing to help you and give you advice yeah. So I, I'm so happy you found that um, also. So tell us a little bit about um, your career change. How, like, how did you make that jump? 
Uh, well, last spring, as everyone knows, we had a pandemic that turned everything upside down. Uh, so I needed to leave the position that I was in and decided that because of how much I was enjoying FileMaker, I didn't want to go and do it on the side or as part of what I was doing. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, so I decided to just kind of jump in. I threw myself into anything and everything that I could to get exposure, to get out there. I didn't have a network. I had It was totally new community for me. Uh, so I joined the WIT-FM database committee. They advertise, you don't need to be an experienced dev. Yes, safe space. <laughs> So I got in the leadership position there. I joined volu or volunteered for join table. Um, and I attended my first Claris Engage session, um, conference, whatever you want to call it last year. I had to go through it twice because I was so immersed in auto enter <laughs> that I wasn't paying attention to the speakers on the main stage and then had to go and watch those videos again later. <laughs> okay, so you met mentioned two great resources right there, join table and auto enter. Vanessa, since you're our resident dictionary this morning, can you define join table for us? And then Janine, I'd love for you to take a second to talk about what is auto enter. So join table is another nonprofit um, that a lot of people in the Claris community are involved in. It partners people with technology problems with technology innovators. And I, I mean, they have lots of great initiatives, diverse table, charitable. Um, so check them out, get involved. It's another great place to kind of practice your development skills. Yeah, I mean, what you're hearing is just the power of this community at large and, and the network that you can build and the generosity of the people out there. Auto Enter is an example of that. Auto Enter is a place that is um, <clears throat> where many in our community go and are currently watching this together um, in real time. And so there's a link if you'd like to join, but it was it was um, spun up by uh, one of our partners in the community and and many of our experts are there um, enthusiastically uh, participating in lively discussion watching today, hopefully, um, and are there to answer questions and to help. Uh, I think a lot of what you're hearing from Beth and Vanessa with women innovating together and join table and Beth's experience with mentorship is that there is a generous community out there ready to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, auto enter has made these virtual conferences like such a difference uh, for me personally, it's just like you feel like you're with your friends. So uh, totally recommend checking out auto enter. Um, all right. So Beth, sorry, we're going to finish up your story here. So you threw yourself into everything and then you made a career switch. So walk us through through how you were able to do that. So I am officially a career switcher as of a few months ago. Um, through that WIT-FM relationship, through the jobs board that they have in the Slack channel, uh, I heard about, hey, I need help with a five-hour project. I said, I'm available, you know, what can I do? That five-hour project turned into six to seven months worth of a subcontracting gig with multiple clients and everything in there, uh, and then turned into a full-time position. Um, through that same jobs board, somebody on the database committee with me said, hey, the Claris Platinum partner that I work for is looking for a junior developer. Anyone interested? So I raised my hand again, turned in my resume, and you know, here I am now a junior developer and project manager for the Scarpetta Group. Oh, I love that. So awesome. Um, Janine, I want to talk to you a little bit. You know, Beth had a great experience, and that's one path, right? But there's so many resources out there. Like, where does a developer even know where to begin if they want to, you know, increase their skills on the Claris platform? Great question. Uh, and we at Claris are doing our very best to try to make that journey in getting started easier with every um, investment that we make. And so the first thing that I would say is if you're brand new and you're trying to figure out what is this Claris FileMaker platform all about? What is this community all about? Find yourself at community.claris.com and specifically a new page that we've just stood up that does its very best to curate and organize all of the available resources that Claris has made available in one place. It's called the Claris FileMaker Learning Adventure. It was just released last week um, and it's a curated journey that uh, highlights the best available resources that we have on a path to guide someone new to uncovering what is Claris, why should Claris be explored as a really powerful platform for building apps in the low code space, 
And then all of the skills that you can develop over time and learning and building out solutions and then advancing beyond that. So we've done our best to organize it in this uh, new space on the community uh, site. So I encourage anyone new, check that out first. We also have the Claris Academy, which is a very robust uh, guided learning plan experience. If you're really looking to sharpen up your technical skills, that is worth checking out as well. Um, <clears throat> in addition, you heard Beth mention um, user groups that she was encouraged to, to find her local user group. And there are groups meeting around the world still in the past year throughout the pandemic virtually now. And so some of the borders of geography have become blurred in, in a really nice and positive way. Um, so those groups are available regionally in your local area and there are ways for you to find those um, on claris.com, but also I know Join Table has a resources page that makes it easy to find your local meetup and user group as well. But what a great way to get um, <clears throat> introduced to people in your own backyard and maybe some experts from around the world because the virtual meetups are happening um, monthly. So encourage, encourage new individuals to check those out as well. What a great place to go and say, I'm stuck. Can someone help me? <laughs> um, I've seen it happen in, in attending uh, meetups and user groups over the course of my time with Claris. Um, and then beyond that, you know, we have conferences like this. Uh, when it, it permits and we can all be together again safely, please consider coming to Claris Engage and, and other user conferences. Um, as well. So uh, there's a lot uh, out there. And like I said, we at Claris are doing our best to try to organize what we have available through our community site and the new learning adventure. So definitely check those out. Um, there are also so many third party resources um, through partners and certified trainers around the world. So um, you can check out uh, some of those resources, uh, both through the Claris learning adventure, but also um, through join tables curated resource page as well. And I believe we put those in the chat. So um, save those links, bookmark them, and, and it'll be a good place to start. Yeah, so. awesome. Thank you. I, I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying. I, I've been a developer for 14 years now. I think the community forum is just incredible and vital. Um, and everyone's so generous on there to help answer questions. And right. also Chances love are, going to conference. You have a question, somebody there has answered it, yeah. right? So yeah right right yeah exactly um it's nice you don't have to ask the question yourself there's usually somebody was there before you and you have the answer right there um so thad you know we heard from janine talking about the different resources out there and beth beth's journey and how she was so excited to throw herself into the community with all these initiatives and so much so that she even pulled you her husband along in with her so tell us a little bit, how are you involved in the Claris community right now? Um, so she pulled me in to join Diversitable, um, which is a group that's designed to um, help bring help mentor um, minorities looking to get involved in the Claris community. Um, so she brought me in at the time I was I was a hiring manager of a of an infrastructure team, and this was very close to me because, I, you know, it's it's very difficult to hire minorities. It's very difficult to find them in in the system, and here's a way to kind of get involved and help Change get that. some people that mm -hmm. opportunity to go beyond and get into tech in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like your experiences in the industry. Are, like, are you hoping that people who go through Diverse Table have a similar experience to, to what you had or a different experience to what you had? Oh, no, I, I, they have to have a different experience than I had. Um, I came into this, no mentor, no understanding of what I was getting involved in, um, you know, in, in my current iteration of my, my tech my involvement in the tech industry, uh, I started off, you know, just thinking, am I just going to be handing people new phones and telling them to turn, reboot their computers um, for years on end? And, uh, but, you know, I, I worked hard. Um, I started learning a bunch of stuff on my own. And soon enough, I was doing a lot of automation work um, and then showing up in meetings and 
helping to plan out projects and um, bring in new tech and come up with ideas on how to make things better. Um, you know, at the same time, I, I felt like a unicorn in these meetings because I was all alone um, as a minority in, in a lot of these meetings. And, you know, it, to some extent, it feels a little, it's a little scary. Um, and there's definitely nobody there to, to like help me under, you know, mm -hmm. be prepared for that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with a mentor, like you, uh, you're hoping that people will be guided in not only technical skills, but, you know, just like career path, right? Absolutely. Like, uh, you know, obviously step number one is the technical side of things, but it, it's also a matter of understanding, um, what you can do with the, these technical skills and how this goes beyond just like solving a specific technical problem, but also to like becoming an architect, right? And and knowing like thinking beyond just the problem for today, but also like how to how to plan out for the future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And another thing that diverse people does is like job prepping skills, like um like interview and resume building and all of that so it's really not just the tech it's like the whole package you want to have right right, right. Yeah. and they, th these are they these are skills that you know I, inter I i still interview a lot of people and that's something that you know that's really important you know how you present yourself how you sell yourself and mm -hmm. that's a skill that you know a mentor can give um that is not easily found beyond mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Totally agree. So if someone wants to apply for Diverse Table as a mentor or a mentee, where should they go? Uh, they should go to jointable.org. Um, and there is a link for what we do. And there you'll see the the page for Diverse Table. And from there, you can um, apply to either become a tabler or a um ambassador. or an ambassador mm -hmm. sorry um <laughs> i know we the, give them all these weird names <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh, but a tabler or an ambassador um and from there those of us on the advisory board will meet and find the best match between between a tabler mm -hmm. and an ambassador uh, and get them started and help set up that initial roadmap and occasionally check in to see how how they're doing and you know, some people also may need multiple advisors for different topics. Um, so we'd also help facilitate that as well. That's great. Thank you. Um, Vanessa, I want to jump over to you. Uh, so Janine earlier mentioned like the importance of conferences. And I know that you um, started going to FontMaker conferences when you were very young. So I'm interested to hear from you. Like you're now the current co-lead of uh, co-lead facilitator of Women Innovating Together. So what was your journey like? And do you feel like, you know, participating in conferences played a, a role in, in your where you are today? Yeah, so I think my first official conference was in either high school or college. And I just remember the, the sessions and the content was really inspiring and very, very interesting. And I was also really lucky to have uh, Molly Connolly, who Beth mentioned earlier, invite me to a women's luncheon. And I just remember the impact that seeing all of those women in one room at this tech conference made. And it kind of was always in the back of my mind. And fast forward about 10 years later, I was at the conference again and talking to Molly afterwards. I said, I really, I really want to get involved. Like, what can I do? And she's like, you know, you're on the team. Like, here, you're going to run the luncheon next year. And so that's really when I got started in WIT FM. And it's just been an incredible resource, I think, especially in a non-development role. Um, it's played a huge role in how I have been able to get involved in the Claris community, but also it's just been a huge part of my personal and professional development. I not only have lifelong friends um, through WIDFM, but I have also had a great place to go when I get stuck or when I have questions or when I need some guidance or advice in my career and kind of what I'm looking to do. So I can't stress enough how important it is to just get involved. 
I, I will say that Molly also got me involved. So she's three for three of women on this call right now. <laughs> so thank you, Molly. Um, all right. So I, I'm one question that I'm guessing people are wondering is, is women innovating together only for women? No. So leadership opportunities and scholarships are reserved for women, but everything else is open for everyone. We have virtual meetups that we hold monthly that are open for everyone to attend. We have our quarterly meetings that are open. We host virtual and hopefully uh, soon in 2022 in person events as well as the mentorship program with diversity table. So those are open for everyone. We want everyone to get involved and to to move their career on into the next level. Awesome. Thank you. Beth, I have a similar question for you then. So is diversity table only for beginners or is it only for underrepresented groups in tech? Nope, it's for everybody. <laughs> That's one of the things that I love about diversity table. Our mission is to increase diversity in technology, but we don't turn anyone away. We're looking for all skill levels. We're looking for, uh, it doesn't matter your race, your gender, none, none of that matters. Uh, we're not even biased against people who don't know Claris. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> no, so actually the, one of the advantages of FAD, we've got, we've had a couple of tablers that were non FileMaker Claris people. They were just techies. They needed some web development and some skills in that area. And he's been able to pull a full few people in to be advice, uh, sorry, ambassadors um, for that role as well. Um, we actually, our very first graduate is one of those people that wore many hats, uh, Kate Waldhauser. Uh, she volunteered as a tabler. Um, she wanted some help. She's an advanced file maker developer herself, uh, but wanted some help building her presentation skills. Uh, we paired her with somebody that has been doing engage or devcon conferences for years and she already finished her sessions and graduated and you can see her upcoming session do a little plug for her <laughs> she's got one coming up here in a couple weeks um but she's also uh an ambassador and has her own person that she's mentoring through and some more basic skills yeah thank you um, okay, so diverse table is really for anyone and it has a lot to offer for someone who um, who is new to the platform. So Vanessa, someone who is new to the Claris platform, how can WIT FM help? Yeah, so as Beth has kind of talked about in her in her story and how she got involved in the database committee, there are tons of great leadership opportunities um, that can really help expand your network, propel your career. There is a very cool blog post on the Claris blog about our former uh, lead facilitator for WIT-FM, Chrissy Ferris, and her journey and how um, WIT-FM had played in that. And um, we also have quarterly meetings. Come, learn more, connect with people, find your mentor. We can't stress that enough. Um, go on the website, apply, uh, submit your application, get paired up with someone. Um, start going to virtual meetups, soak up all of the information you can and and just try and get connected and um, there's also uh, lots of different conferences and sessions that you can go to so make sure you're taking advantage of those hey vanessa can i jump in we have a question um that came in and i think now's an appropriate time since um uh you're talking so much about how wit fm can help it's about being a paid member and being able and how that determines access to resources scholarships events etc can you just talk about the membership yeah, so paid versus unpaid. We are um, virtual meetups and our quarterly meetings are open for everyone. Mentorship is open for everyone, whether you're a member or not. Um, and scholarship recipients receive their first year of membership for free. So if you are, if you do apply for the scholarship and you're chosen, you will have your first year of WIDF membership paid for free. And um, we do, though, have some. Uh, events that are for only uh, members, so whether virtual um, or we haven't had an in person members event yet, but possibly this this next year and our slack space is, as Beth mentioned, very active. We have a great job board and that is reserved for our members. So that is 1 of the, the member benefits is access to some of those conversations and postings. Good question. Um. I wanted to point out that I love Chrissy Ferris's story too. I think it's Beth so similar to yours and it's really inspirational. She would just went from um, a user who decided, oh, I love doing FileMaker 
and I was like, okay, so I'm going to do a complete career change. And it, it's a great story. Um, so we, you mentioned scholarships. Um, how many women have already been sent to Claris uh, conferences through scholarships? Yeah, so we have sent 18 women from seven different countries to previous uh, Claris conferences. And so it's a global initiative. We're really excited to, to see where that goes this coming year in 2022. Awesome. So I have one last question, then we're going to do a couple speed round questions and then we'll open the floor for any Q and A. Um, but Beth, so, so this is for you because I just love your story. <laughs> um, I loved hearing about how much What FM helped you and how you just made that career change. And um, when Join Table was launching Diversa Table, you were one of the very first to volunteer, and now you play such a vital role as one of our lead advisors. So tell me a little bit about why Diversa Table was important for you to volunteer for right away. So actually, I believe it was about this time last year, Maka was leading a panel and mentioned <laughs> diversity table and I'm shooting her an email while she's still leading the panel saying, I'm in, I'm in, what can I do? <laughs> um, but no, I, I'm a female, obviously, um, and I've always been good with numbers and logic and problem solving. And ever since middle school, I'm used to being one of the few females in the room. Um, math and science classes, you know, heavily male populated places. Um, and beyond that, I've got two daughters who are double minorities, they're daughters, <laughs> and they are mixed race, So, but they love to code. So diversity and specifically diversity in tech is just, it's near and dear, it's, it's part of my life. So. Awesome. I also have two daughters and I'm really shocked that one of them who's home hasn't crashed the session right now. <laughs> so if you see a little child, don't be surprised. All right, cool. Some Speed round. Developers, in, including. Yeah, my... no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> There's a exactly. <laughs> Even if you're four. <laughs> um, all right, so speed round. I would love for everyone to talk really quickly about what's your favorite development tool? Like, what's a resource that someone new to the community should definitely check out? So for me, like I cannot live with the to empower FM toolbox. It allows you to search quickly across all scripts without having to do a DDR and I use it like 300 times a day. So I totally recommend everyone checking that out. Beth, what about you? I love Slack. I love the network that we have there. I use it for work. I use it for WitFM. I use it through join table and those communities are all global. It doesn't matter what time of the day or night I go, and I shoot out a note, somebody somewhere is going to respond with an answer. So Slack is an, an invaluable tool for me. Um, Thad, what about you? Um, I have Visual Studio Code. Um, I've used a lot of editors of code over the years, and including Notepad, which is terrible. But uh, Visual Studio Code, it, you know, I get to use it on my Mac and my Windows PCs for work. and you know, it's it. I almost don't even have to look away from from those windows uh, to get everything I need to get done done. Janine, community.claris.com. I mean, as a non-developer, I know from hearing from many developers that if you're stuck and you have a question, that is a great place to go. Um, many customers and developers have told me that repeatedly. Uh, so if you are stuck and you need a development tool, you have an arsenal of developers at your disposal on the community. So that's where I would say. <clears throat> Vanessa? Yeah, so as another non-developer, I'm going to go with Mentimeter. So it's a great tool for presentations to make them interactive. And so if you are new and you are stuck on something or you're working on a project, put together a presentation, present at a user group or a meetup. Um, and get feedback or help from other people. And that is a great tool to help you do that. Perfect. All right, question number two. Um, what are, what's one or two things that someone new to the community should do? Beth. Jump in head first, get involved and put yourself out there. That is a three in one. <laughs> Worked for you, right? Worked for Chrissy too. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Bad, what about you? We say get a mentor. 
you, you just have to, it, it makes life so much easier to navigate, um, you know, when you look for your, especially if you're changing careers, but even also if you're early on, get that mentor. Great. Janine? Ask for help. Step out of your comfort zone. There's so many people out there to help. I mean, and it's been evidenced by the, the panelists here. I'm just so thrilled to be among you. So ask for help. It's, it's funny how that's a, such a hard thing sometimes. Just ask for help, but you'll be surprised with this community. They're just so ready to help. Um, and Vanessa? Uh, I would go with attend user groups or virtual meetups and keep attending virtual conference sessions. And once we have an in-person conference again, um, find a way to get there and sign up and get involved. And come to the WITFM chocolate party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you all. So I know we weren't able to cover all the amazing resources out there. So um, as Jean mentioned, Jointable did put together a big list. Um, we tried to make it as complete as possible, but if you see anything missing, let us know and we would love to add it on there. And I think we're gonna open the floor to any questions if we have any. Yeah, we do. Um, I'm actually gonna take one of the questions that came in and, and this is such a great question about you know, the trajectory of um, someone starting out to, you know, what's fully possible and, and how we have such a robust partner program and one can start as a new developer, maybe work for a partner and maybe someday become a partner. Um, <clears throat> and that is a very real thing. And we are committed at Claris to doing our best to support those who want to grow in to that future um, <clears throat> as a professional developer and a maybe professional Claris partner. Um, so there are many details on claris.com about what you may want to pursue in becoming a partner and how to how to do so. Um, but what I will say is we are committed to some very specific programs around learning and development to grow partners. Um, one is with um, a boot camp program called Quasar Silicon Valley, and we are about to launch a small pilot with some up and coming future developers and possibly future partners. Um, through a learning curriculum that will run them through to learn Cl the Claris platform. Um, we also announced a low code accelerator program during our kickoff a few weeks ago, which is specific to um, not only growing our partner community, but growing diversity among our partner community and is focused on bringing black entrepreneurs into the tech space. Um, so those are just a couple examples of, you know, our commitment to um, ensuring that whatever your goal is that w there's a path for you to get there if your goal is to learn the basic skills and and develop a career um you know as an in-house developer as a <clears throat> you know uh, working for a partner um that's an option if you want to go even further you know becoming um the next generation of claris partners is very possible as well and we're committed to programs to support that so those are just a few examples but um appreciate the question um and thanks I'll also add that um, with diverse table, becoming a partner is an option for like, you know, what would you like to do? And if if you are if you are interested in becoming a partner, we are we have incredible volunteers um, in our database and many of them partners. And I'm sure I, we can find people to help who've already been through it and have already gone through it um, to help you mentor mentor you through becoming a partner. Yep. And if you're looking for a partner to help you, just just generally, I mean, that is an option as well to help you with your own development in your business to try to take it to the next level. Um, we have over 1400 partners worldwide, so you can you can find a partner on our partner finder on claris.com as well. Um, Maka, there's a question saying, um, repeat the name of the tool you frequently use. Oh, yeah, it's the, um, the to empower FM toolbox and it's essentially like a plugin, I think, but you install it and then you can really quickly search all your scripts um, without having to like create a DDR. So, uh, you know, for example, if you if you have a variable that you or some some. Let's say you have a, a field name that you need that changed and you just want to see if it's hard coded anywhere or something like that. You can just search for it in your scripts. It's it's amazing. Highly recommend checking it out. And I think, uh, sorry, did Rosemary get the link for that? There, okay, sweet. She got it. Yeah. Any other questions? 
I think we are good. I don't see any other questions that have come in and, and um, I think we can probably come yeah. up in the end. But we'll okay. hand the mic back to Rosemary. Thank you so much, panelists and all the attendees. I love to see all the familiar faces in the attendee list. So thanks for coming. Yes, again, I just want to add my thanks to the panel and to everybody who attended and just give you a briefing on what's coming up in Claris Engage Beyond. So in just a few minutes, we'll be kicking off our first virtual networking session, which will be an un informal opportunity to meet and greet Claris community members, including all of today's panelists. Um, that's going to be a regular WebEx meeting and set up with using smaller breakout rooms and some polls. So I think we'll have a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. And then at the end of this month on September 28th, we have a partner exclusive event um, to review Claris's strategic growth initiatives. And coming up um, tentatively on October 26th, we'll have a couple of sessions focused on Claris and cybersecurity awareness. So Save the date on your calendar and come back to claris.com forward slash engage in the next week or two um, to register and get the full details for those upcoming events. And one more time, just thank you to everybody who came today and participated in our panel. And my last plea as one of the people putting together the program is please complete the survey at this link and when you exit the session you'll get dumped right into that survey also um, we're using that survey to guide our planning for future sessions for claris engage beyond and also to get an early read on what people want to hear about at our fingers crossed live claris engage coming up next year so again thanks everybody and we hope to see you either on the networking session in a few minutes or at a future Claris Engage Beyond event.